Happy Eastern, everyone, with this daily old tweet. Today we're gonna talk also about can ends from the Lord of the Rings help us fight against climate change? We're also gonna find some Legos lost at sea. And finally, we get to know this amazing singer. What bird is it? Let me know in the comments. And you will find the answer in the end of this episode. Welcome to the Blue Marble News Watch. Our first news is all about the oceans. And last week there was many tweets about this topic. From BBC News we find out that oceans can be successfully restored by 2050, say scientists. Despite being treated as humanity rubbish dumped of for decades, the oceans of the world are providing remarkably resilient, says New Scientific Review. Fish and other marine species have been hunted almost to extinction, while oil spills and other forms of pollution have poisoned the seas. Over the last few decades, the growing influence of climate change has bleached corals and seen the ocean's acidity increase. This was documented in last year's special report from the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, IPCC. This new review recognizes the scale of the problems, but also points to the remarkable resilience of the seas. Humpback whale numbers have rebounded since the ban of commercial whaling. The proportion of marine species assessed as threatened with global extinction by the IUCN has dropped from 80% in 2000 to 11.4% in 2019. Our study documents the recovery of marine populations, habitat and ecosystems following past conservation interventions. It provides specific evidence-based recommendations to scale proven solutions globally, said lead author Carlos Duarte, who is professor of marine science at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Tuval, Saudi Arabia. We know what we ought to do to rebuild marine life, and we have evidence that this goal can be achieved with three decades. Indeed, this requires that we accelerate our efforts and spread them to areas where efforts are currently modest. And here you see these beautiful pictures from the oceans all over the world. In my sixth episode we were talking about how climate change is bleaching coral reefs, rainforest of the sea. But this news gives us hope so that oceans could be recovered in 30 years. And like She Shepherd Organization's founder Captain Paul Watson has said, if oceans die, we die. It means we have to take action now. Our next topic flies us all the way to Amazon rainforest. And this story is by The Guardian and it, it says, Tolkien was right. Giant trees have towering role in protecting forests. So let's go to this world of Lord of the Rings where the study highlights importance of biodiversity as part of strategy to stop planet overheating. And here we can see the primeval, windy, impenetrable forest, World Heritage Site in Uganda. Scientists have shown to be true what J.R.R. Tolkien only imagined in The Lord of the Rings. Giant, slow reproducing trees play an outsized role in the growth and health of the old forests. In the 1930s, the writer gave his towering trees the name Ents. Today, a paper in the journal Science says these long-lived pioneers contribute more than previously believed to carbon sequestration and biomass increase. And here, the trunk and part of the canopy of the Brazil nut tree, one of the most dominant tree species in the Amazon. Our results show long-lived pioneers are not transient, but an important feature in old forest. They represent about 40% of the biomass, and there are no signs that this declines over time, said the paper's lead author Nadia Ruger 
of the German Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research and the University of Leipzig. In our first news, we were talking about the importance of oceans. And in our second, we talk about importance of forests. Both are the most important carbon sinks of our planet. But we'll move on to our weekly Twitter news. You can find Blue Marble News Watch also from Twitter at Marble News. So please subscribe if you want to find throughout the week some small news infos. We start with IPBES and here we see ahead of World Health Day highlight some of nature's most important contributions to people from growing the plants we use for medicine to protecting us from diseases. And here are some facts about the importance of biodiversity. And you can check these from IPBES Twitter. Number five, land productivity has decreased due to degradation. Number six, world is relying on monocultures. Number seven, biodiversity saves lives. We harvest an estimated 5,000, actually 50,000 to 70,000 plant species for medicines. You can check these seven reasons why the loss of biodiversity concerns us from IPBES tweets. In my earlier episodes, was it episode two, I was talking about Saima ringed seal, how this record warm winter has affected to its breeding season. And now we have some news from Finnish Luonnonsuojelu Liitto. These seal pups are very vulnerable this year because many of them has been born on open ice. So the death rate of the pups might be over 20%. It is because they are more vulnerable to predators on the open ice from WWF Finland has a great news. There in Eastern University of Finland they have been developing these artificial nests for the seals. And there is a news that this spring there was one puppy that has been given a birth to this kind of artificial nest. This might be the future of the ringed seals all over the northern hemisphere. And actually there was also a tweet from National Snow and Ice Data Center about Arctic warming could endanger drink seals according to experts. The seals rely on snow caves to raise their young, but snow depth in parts of the pupping habitat could be reduced by up to 70% by the end of the century. This news was also about ring seals like Saima ring seals, also one endemic subspecies of these ring seals is. And here are a couple more tweets. M. Lim tweeted, how are you so beautiful? This snail is appropriately named the Chuval Top Snail. And we don't need to wonder where that name came from. Inside Climate News is tweeting, a new study warns that climate change will soon lead to massive ecosystem collapse as key species go extinct. I hope our predictions are wrong the lead author said. And these key species mean that in many ecosystems there are species that are extremely important for the whole ecosystem. So if this one key species is disappearing from the ecosystem, it might make the whole ecosystem to collapse. One tweet from Guardian Environment. It's positively alpine. Disbelief in big cities as air pollution falls. And these pictures from all around the world, from the big cities, are amazing. Could this wake up people to see how pollution is making the world look like? And our last tweet is from World Wildlife. Did you know there are two subspecies of walrus? It's true. The two subspecies are the Atlantic and the Pacific walrus, and both of them spend most of their time in the Arctic. WWF works to address threats to the Arctic, including the growing climate crisis. So also walruses are in danger because of climate change. But we'll move on to our next news. I wonder if there is anyone who doesn't like Legos. 
And our next story flies us all the way to Perampot Beach, UK, where lives one person who is saving Legos lost at sea. It was last week there was interesting story in the Guardian. Monopoly houses, toy soldiers and Lego, the museum of plastic lost at sea. And this story was all about Trace Williams who started to collect all the plastic she found from the beaches. Here is a story about her and story about Lego lost at sea. The waste washing up on British beaches is a shocking but fascinating catalogue of our times. And there you can see some collection of all the different plastics she has found during the years. Tracy Williams has been a beach comber for most of her life. It started with school holidays to North Cornwall in the 1960s, searching for cells, sea glass and mermaids, purses among the rocks and sand. But I'd also find old puddles, figurines, medieval rings and bring them in, clean them up, she says. Then 23 years ago, everything changed. I started finding Lego pieces washed up on the shore. Flippers, scuba tanks, the occasional dragon or octopus. By that time I had two young children and we could take bucket down to the beach and just fill them with the amount of Lego coming in. The Lego had come from a spill on 13 February 1997 when a cargo ship called the Tokyo Express was hit by a freak wave off the coast of Cornwall, spilling 62 containers into the sea, including one filled with nearly 5 million pieces of Lego, bound for New York. About 10 years ago she moved to Newgway and I went down to Perapont Beach and there was the Lego, still coming in. There was just so much plastic on the beach and I started to wonder where it all had come from. She got a dog, a collie spaniel, cross called Chess, and together they walked the coastline every day, Williams collecting and documenting the plastic debris. She set up Facebook pages recording her finds, including one called Lego Lost at Sea. Others started to get in touch, growing into a community of 50,000 followers. And here are some more plastic findings from the beach. It seems like someone has also lost his teeth. Initially mapping the spills with, with a fellow beachcomber, Williams then teamed up with ocean crafters and universities to help research the weathering and persistence of plastic in the marine environments. She also started to catalogue her finds, which she called artifacts of the Anthropocene, arranging into color-coded grids that bear a striking resemblance to the drawers of peculiar ethnographic objects. In Oxford's Pitt Rivers Museum, pieces of disposable history arranged with the scientific reverence, a taxonomy of plastic. I see them all as ingredients in the plastic soup, Williams says. Look closely at the grids and you'll see Lego and children toys, but also raw blocks tile spacers, monopoly houses, kigarillo tips, curtain hooks, biofilters, smorties tube lids, fishing beds, broken security seals, razor parts, bits of toothbrushes, roofing screw cups, medical lancets, golf tees, false teeth, plastic solder, posties, rubber bands, bungs and stoppers. Some of the items in these grids Cowboys and submarines from Kellogg's cereals, a talon yet car, are children's toys from the 1950s and early 60s. Williams recently found a hack strawberry shaped syrup puddle that, according to the Museum of Design in Plastics, might be 70 years old. It just doesn't go away, she says. It's also important to remember that of all the plastic that enters the ocean, 70% sinks to the bottom. We only see that floats ashore. How many billions of items from cargo spills are lying on the seabed? What does the bottom of the ocean look like? Williams posts most of her grids and montages on her Twitter accounts, Lego Lost at Sea. And this is very interesting to follow this Lego Lost at Sea Twitter page, where you can find 
all the findings she's collecting from the beaches and the amount is amazing. You better check it out. But from Perranport Beach we will fly a little more open picture of our planet and we'll get to know this bird I was asking in the beginning of our episode. Did you find out what was the bird we were talking about? It's here on CNN.com. Climate change is making nightingales wings shorter and their annual migration harder, study finds. And here you can see this marvelous singer, nightingales, that are known for their song, but shorter wingspan makes their migration harder. So CNN, nightingales may be less likely to survive their annual migration because climate change is causing the songbirds to evolve shorter wings, new research found. Nightingales flock to sub-Saharan Africa every year, but researchers from the Complutense University of Madrid warn that the birds find it harder to return if their wingspans are stunted. Their study was published Wednesday in the journal The Org Ornithological Advances. There is much evidence that the climate change is having an effect on migratory birds, changing their arrival and laying dates and their physical features over the last few decades lead author Carolina Remacha said in the statement. In Spain, the spring season has shifted later in the year and droughts over the summer have become longer and more intense, meaning nightingales have a shorter window in which they can raise their young, the team said. That timetable has led to the more successful birds having smaller clutches or groups of eggs which affect wingspan and potentially other important survivalist features because of the unique way the songbirds' genes interact. That means having fewer offsprings due to a warming climate is likely also responsible for the birds having shorter wingspans, the researchers said. Research by the National Audubon Society last year found that two-thirds of Northern American bird species 389 different species are at risk of extinction from climate change. Another independent study said that nearly 3 billion birds have disappeared from the United States and Canada in the past half century. And further research in 2019 stated that the sizes of birds in the US has changed over the past four decades, likely as a result of the changing climate. Although that the study found that the birds' bodies were shrinking, but their wingspans were getting wider. And, for example, here in Finland is a springtime and many birds are migrating back here. Even though we had record warm winter, we have had quite cold springtime now. And uh, these nightingales, they spent their winter time here in sub-Africa and from all over from South Africa they will fly eventually to Europe and to Finland. And you can imagine that if your wings are getting shorter this is going to be much harder trip to make. So our animal of the week is Truss Nightingale. Also known as the Prosser is a small passerine bird it is a migratory insectivorous species breeding in forests in Europe and the Palearctic and overwintering in Africa. Sexes are similar. Nightingale is derived from night and the old English galan to sing. BirdLife International estimated that there are between 11 and 20 million trust nightingales in Europe. The bird is considered to be of least concern by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN. And information was taken from Wikipedia. If you'd like to hear more of this beautiful singing and you like Trust Nightingales, please subscribe, click on the bell and push like. And thank you for watching our Eastern episode. And we'll see next week again. Bye till then. See you.